With so much negativity behind us connected to 2020 and 2021, so many of us are hoping and trusting for a brighter and better 2022. Of course, one of the main needs of families is work and a good job. And one of the main needs of a business is for labor for those jobs. COVID has changed the way we work and how we work. So what are the labor and job trends for 2022? Well, joining me today from Vancouver is Canadian Workplace Culture Index founder and CEO, Antonio Giovanovic. Antonio, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Glad to have you on. And I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thanks so much, perfectly. Awesome. <laughs> So Antonio, our experience with COVID transformed so many part of our lives uh, here in Canada. Probably one of the biggest is how and where we work. So what is the Canadian Workplace Culture Index looking like? We're uh, looking at workplace satisfaction, company cares, diversity and inclusion, information and recognition, employee connection and loyalty. So those are the different workplace attributes that we're looking at. So when speaking of the Canadian workplace culture, how have you observed the workplace change, especially since the pandemic? The workplace has changed. You know, the workplace is now more diverse in many ways. Um, we're uh, managing multi-generational workforces. They're looking for more than just ping pong culture, they're seeking growth and development opportunities. They crave mobility, learning and development, multi-generational, multi-ethnic, working from here, working from there and almost everywhere. Um, the new workforce is more dynamic and diverse in every way than before, than ever before. Generationally, it's not just millennials anymore and Gen Z stampeding, they're stampeding their way into the workforce. Okay, and I know, of course, with the pandemic too, we've seen so many layoffs and resignations, early retirements. So what are your predictions of how the labor market will evolve in 2022 and beyond? I think the great return or not is, you know, remote, hybrid, or in-person flexibility and work-life balance are not new topics, but the pandemic has shown a great spotlight on non-conventional work arrangements now more than ever before. And as companies look to the future, they're contemplating various models with some preferring a full-scale return to the office and others contemplating remote work and many trying to sort out the particulars of the hybrid work arrangement and various security protocols where people are working from home, whereas in the past there wasn't such a large volume of individuals working from home. There's a new benefits and perks paradigm. Everybody's thinking about, you know, um, individuality as a valued principle in today's workforce. And this is being reflected by the benefits of per the perks that our different employers are offering. Um, what was once kind of a one size fits all for benefits it, um, has morphed into somewhat of a buffet with progressive employers becoming increasingly creative in their offerings. Staples such as health insurance and personal development opportunities remain common, but um, have joined by flexibility and programs offering lifestyle wellness programs um, with an ever increasing number of platforms for sharing information. Employers can expect both successes and failures to be amplified as they kind of try to navigate this new, somewhat new world, but um, they're really considering equity and equality in their benefits. And it, now it's more important than ever in, you know, with the workforce being so dynamic and the competition for talent being so fierce. We've seen perks like, uh, you know, I guess perks like free scuba lessons, pizza on Fridays or ping pong tables have lost their luster while rock solid benefits for employees, long-term personal and professional success including professional development, career growth, group retirement planning. And are, these are just some of the things that are emerging um, that employers are considering. Yeah, well, that sounds like positive changes, actually, and more long-term benefits for the employee, absolutely. Would you say that it's more of an employee's market these days? 100% it is. Um, uh, we, we, we see employers all over that are struggling 
to find top talent. And they're um, one of the challenges I see is employers feel at times that the employees or talent pool um, has a lack of appreciation for what they're offering. But on, um, on the other side of things, the employers in many respects have done a poor job in communicating the employer value proposition outside of just salary. What are they offering to attract them, differentiate themselves and position themselves as a leader in their industry or some, somewhere that's just got a great culture? People want more than salary now. They realize, you know, the pandemic has really brought work-life blend to the mix. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on the employee side of the labor equation, what, what do you find that the staff are really looking for in 2022? Yeah, I guess overall, the youngest Canadians are less happy with their jobs least likely to agree that their organization is a good fit for them and least likely to see themselves working at the same organization in five years. Our research with uh, the Angus Reid Institute uh, presented that 60% of Canadians say they'd leave their current job for the same position at another organization for a 10% raise. BIPOC Canadians are three, three times more likely to state that they've been let go from their company because of COVID. And more than 30% of Canadians believe that they get away with bullying at their organizations. So employers, um, so employees over the age of 35 showed high levels of workplace satisfaction and loyalty, uh, more loyalty than employees under the age of 35. Organizations in, in, in the coming year are going to have to do a good job of really demonstrating their overall value proposition to recruit talent. The market is definitely an employee's market and many people are getting multiple job offers. And um, I know as an organization ourselves, the talent that we're recruiting, we're trying to do a good job of sharing what we offer outside of just the salary and benefit, like staple health and dental. How are we creating a culture of belonging and and giving them opportunities for advancement and just overall supporting their well-being. And I think that's what people are looking for in 2022. Right. Interesting. And it's, it looks like employee retention is kind of a problem. So are, are companies looking for ways to help employees identify with the culture in their workplace as a way to retain staff? I know you've also mentioned the, the change in, in benefits and... I mean, I don't know if salary will be an option, salary increases will be an option, especially with, we're looking at inflation in 2022 as well. Definitely. I think salary is just kind of, um, that's table stakes nowadays. Um, everybody needs to earn a living and wants a living wage, obviously, and to be compensated well. But um I, I just was chatting with a senior partner at a large uh, consulting firm the other day, and he shared that they gave raises to a large percentage of the team across the country, and that didn't move the dial at all. People were still exiting the organization at the same pace. And so they're really struggling to do a good job of sharing. They, they offer a lot of different benefits and perks to the employees, but they really haven't done a good job of packaging that and letting people know and making them aware of it. And also um, employers, I think, that are very rigid in their mindset of not allowing any flexibility or accommodation, I think their time is coming and the employees are going to be exiting those organizations and looking for organizations that cater to their lifestyle needs, but also um, expect performance as well. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, who would have thought that we'd seen the day where the employees can call the shots? Uh, why do you think, Antonio, that there's such a huge paradigm shift right now? Like, did the pandemic have anything to do, it, do with it when people got laid off? Was it a time for them to reflect on what they really wanted? Or were they busy upgrading their skills and gaining new skills, making themselves more valuable to companies? What's caused this big, this big shift? I think um, it's multifactorial, really. I think the pandemic definitely shone light on that. Um, I think for a long time, people um, were hesitant to trust employees to do a good job. Um, and not being in the office nine to five or dying at your desk, people have realized that you can have a remote work situation and some organizations are going fully remote. Um, some were fully remote prior to the pandemic, like uh, Zapier out of San Francisco. Um, they've been fully remote and they actually don't want their employees, too many of them to congregate in one location because it's against their culture. Um, I think, I, I think um, now that employers are just seeing that there's a shortage of great talent out there. And as the boomers kind of get out of the workforce, there's a new generation coming in and they have different value structure than some of the, some of the previous uh, generations that some people might think, well, they were ready to die at their desk. And you know, older workers were seeking more traditional benefits and compensation for work, while younger workers they're seeking they're seeking a great culture to work with and be aligned with a great culture, and they want to be proud of the organization that they work with. Are they are they a B corporation? Are they thinking about just the shareholder value or all the stakeholders involved? Are they doing great work in sustainability, the environment, socially? Um, people, people put um, put their beliefs and values and align that with company values and beliefs. That's a really good point you brought up, especially with the younger generation. Um, their values are completely different than some of the older generations. Like you said, they look more to the environment and see what, like, is this a green company that I'm working for? I think we're going to be seeing trends like that coming up in the future with the younger generation hitting the workforce for sure. And obviously, Antonio, like you mentioned before, so over the past 21 months, we've seen more and more people working from home, maybe companies that wouldn't normally allow their employees to work from home. Now it's happening. Do you think that this is a trend that's expected to continue and when you compiled your research, what did you find from businesses about how do they feel about staff working remotely? Um, I guess it depends on the leadership. I feel like a lot of employers have been, feel like they've been forced into a situation that they didn't really like because they weren't comfortable with it or grew up in, in this type of arrangement. But I also feel at the same time, um, there was a need, need um, the need was there to shift and push, push the limit on flexibility. And it brought so many amazing opportunities to be doing, you know, interviews such as this <laughs> and connecting with people. Um, and performance wise, I think I think that's where people struggle right now um, is how do they perform? But it, I think it all starts with your hiring practices. And if you're bringing the right people in and they've got a default to action, default to transparency belief system, then you're going to be getting the right people in the door and you don't have to worry about looking over them or as an employer feeling like you don't know what they're doing. So interesting, the, the world that we're living in right now. Thank you so much, Antonio, for coming on. We really appreciate having you on today. Thank you for having me and uh, have a wonderful day.